guys! I know this isn't usually what people use TikTok for, but I was wondering if you would stop for a few moments and talk about Jesus with me. I will also be putting this on YouTube because I know that this is a little bit longer than what people would consider a reel to be, but it is Passion Week, and I know for myself I'm a little upset that it is not around Passover because that's when all of these things took place in Scripture, but being Passion Week, it is a very good chance for us to stop and really consider the things that Jesus went through, both on his life and his death. I will be honest that Resurrection Sunday is actually one of my favorite holidays. In fact, I think it is my favorite. Not for the Easter bunnies and the Easter egg hunts and all of that. I don't celebrate that side of it. What I do celebrate is that the greatest love story in history took place on this moment in time, and we have a day to think about that and reflect on it. I also am thinking of starting a little podcast called Sincere Christianity. So as kind of a little toe in the water here, I'm going to tentatively call this episode one of Sincere Christianity. I was reading in Luke chapter 12 this morning, and <clears throat> I saw something that I hadn't really seen or taken notice of before, but it really spoke to me. I've been thinking about it all day, and I want to share it with you today. It is coming from the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 50. This is Jesus speaking directly, and he says, But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is accomplished. The more you study into this scripture, the more you realize that that baptism he is talking about is his upcoming death, which is still a couple chapters away at this point in Luke, but it's really not that far off. And I was thinking about this today, and I thought, Jesus was distressed. Now, we all know about his time in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he was so stressed that he was sweating drops of blood. I will probably talk about that a little bit more on that night, um, Wednesday night, I believe, if I get my days right. And, um, but we all know that story, how he was sweating drops of blood, but this is in the middle of his ministry, in the middle of one of his most teachable moments in the book of Luke, he mentions, I have a baptism and oh, how distressed I am until it is accomplished. And it just made me think, he had to live, <clears throat> he had to live with the idea and the knowledge that all of this would end in the cross for him, that he had to go to the cross in order to save us. And I thought to myself, why was he particularly distressed in this passage? So I did a little research. I pulled up Matthew Henry's commentary as well as mine, which is John MacArthur's commentary. And one commentator said he was distressed because of his upcoming death. Matthew Henry had mentioned something to the point of him wanting to get to the work that is accomplished through this baptism, through this death. And I was thinking... Both are deeply rooted in love. Because Jesus, he began his ministry, they say, around 30. It lasted for about three years, they say. And at any time in that 33 years, he could have said, I don't think I want to do this. This is much too painful. I can't go through this. Not to mention, he knew exactly what he was in for. He wasn't the only one to be crucified. Crucifixion was a huge thing in that day. And the Romans would put the crosses on display for any passerbyers to see on the outside of town. So I'm sure that he saw a cross or two in his time on earth. And he could have said, I don't really think that's something I want to go through anymore. I love these people, but that's a lot. But he didn't. And it clearly distressed him. But he still chose to go to that cross for us. And that is a monumentous display of love that can't really be explained in words. Another reason I feel like this would be really rooted in love is that he was eager to get to the work that is accomplished. And the work that was accomplished through his work on the cross was reuniting us with God, basically. We were separated from God in our sin. 
and there was no way for us to ever bridge that gap because we're sinful. We needed someone perfect to take our place to, well, as one of my favorite songs puts it, bridge that great divide. There is a cross to bridge that great divide. And it re reunites us with God. It renews that relationship that we lost with him because of our sin. And it gives us an eternity, a home in heaven. And he was eager to get to that work so that afterwards we could be with him. It's amazing to me, guys. I often think about Jesus' love for us like this. Imagine the person that you love most in this world, and I mean you love them with a fervency. You would do anything for them. Go to the ends of the world for them. Just love them. It could be anybody. It could be your children if you have kids. It could be your parents if you are kids. And it could be your spouse, your boyfriend, whoever you love with that kind of fervency. Just hold on to that for a second. And then imagine yourself loving a dandelion seed with that same kind of fervency. I know. Crazy, right? I mean, what is a dandelion seed? Once a dandelion has gone to seed, all it takes is a whoosh of a great big wind and those seeds are just gone. What is their lifespan? Maybe a week or two at the most? In the breeze, here today and gone tomorrow. So it would seem rather crazy to love something with that kind of fervency, something as small and insignificant as a dandelion seed, right? Well, what if we are that dandelion seed? God is the creator of the universe, and we are those dandelion seeds compared to him. And he loves us with a fervency enough to go through everything for us. Truly, he is a God that would stop at nothing to show his love for us. Even though it distressed him, even though it breaks his heart, he still would stop at nothing to look you in the eye and say, my child, I love you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. How amazing is that? Wow. <laughs> That's been on my mind a little bit today. I know this was a bit of a rather long TikTok, but I hope that it spoke to you as it spoke to me. I am praying for you all this week. I hope to be posting more videos about Passion Week to keep our focus on the Lord and just talk about his love for us because in this world of instant gratification, the internet, the television, we often lose that sense of awe and it is my hope that this week we can bring back that awe and just relish in the love that Jesus is offering to us. Thank you guys for taking the time to listen to this video, and I hope that you have a great rest of your Monday and that it's not too crazy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take care.